following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as Cable TV 10 in New Bern, North Carolina. Some of you may be listening or streaming from our website, www.dlblaine.com, and we welcome you as well. We have a lot of interesting topics for the show today. We're glad that, that you joined us. I'm going to start off, um, well, before we do, a lot of our ideas and topics for the show come from our viewers and listeners like yourself. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to give us a call, email, or visit our website. Our phone number is 252-633-0107. Our email for the show is allthingsmoney at dlblain.com. That's D-L-B-L-A-I-N.com. And of course, the easiest way to get in touch with us is head over to our website, dlblain.com, and there's a big contact us button in the upper right hand corner just click that and uh, send us a message so we'll start today with a little follow-up a couple weeks back we talked about the new uh, socialist president in France and some of the things that he is doing uh, to his country that frankly a lot of people think are destroying it well another one has come out uh, recently where the the French business are just very very upset French business uh, very upset at the policies that in investors are fleeing France. Uh, we did a, a story recently about how the wealthy in France are, are moving and that the country's businesses are very concerned. We see that a large loss of confidence over there, and it all surrounds this new president has just really uh, raised the tax rates, the socialist president, tax rates, and uh, things like that to where the new tax law raises the top rate of capital gains from 34.5 to 62.2%. Of course, here in the United States, the, the capital gains rate is currently 15% uh, percent scheduled to rise next year, but it compares with 21% in Spain, 26% in Germany, and 28% in Britain. And we continue to see the deterioration of the European economies and the uh, climate over there, the, a lot of these social, more socialistic policies that, that we see, they're, they're just not working and capital is fleeing those countries um, and there, there's just a lot, of, a lot of problems over there. Um, as I was doing some research for that article, I came across this other article. This was in the Wall Street Journal actually today uh, and it really doesn't have much to do with finance, but I thought it was Kind of interesting anyway, and the title of this was France to Ban Homework, really. <laughs> and it just goes to show you, you know, some of the, the socialist president and the dangers that you have. And Francois Hollande has a bold new plan to tackle social injustice and inequality in France. He's going to ban homework. And um, for part of his proposal for educational reform is, you know, it's just not fair for people that don't have a the same home life to, to make those people do homework. So I'm sure that a lot of our kids out there will be trying to move to France um, because they're, they're going to ban homework. Now, you know, the, the fact whether homework is um, beneficial or not, that's not the, the point of it. The point of this is that um, most people oppose this policy and, and he's doing it to uh, try to equalize uh, everything and make everything fair as opposed to looking at what's best for the education uh, of the kids in the country. So France, um, you know, is really going downhill quickly under this new socialist president, both economically as well as just in general. Um, but for the kids out there, you may want to think about moving to France because they're banning homework. <laughs> anyway, um, another piece here I want to talk about fidelity um, Investments recently came out. There's this, you know, in, in the finance world, it's very seductive to make things overly simplistic. Um, 
you know, the, there's so many, so much financial information you have, you know, 24-7 financial information, unlike, say, medical care or auto repair or, or other things that everybody needs to, to do, and we rely on experts to, to do financial information for some reason. I think it's because it's so informational driven. Um, there's a lot of information out there, and there's a lot of promotion of just, well, if you just go to this website or this easy shortcut, you'll come up with the answer. So Fidelity has come up with their new answer and that they uh, have said that eight times eight is the magic number. And at retirement, you should have saved eight times your final pay. So for example, if you have $50,000 as your final pay, you should have $400,000 uh, saved going into retirement. Um, they also give benchmarks along the way. So for example, at age 35, you should have one times. By 45, you should have about three times your salary, raise, rising to five times by 55. And of course, uh, at retirement, you should have about eight times. This is so simplistic. Some of the assumptions they used was that the typical worker began saving 6% at age 25, gradually increasing to 12% and continued saving until retiring at 67. Um, earned about 40,000 in today's dollars and retired with just under 74,000. Uh, the assumption was that savings grew at 5.5% a year, 32 after inflation. They started modeling that they'll withdraw 5% of savings. Um, and it goes on and on and on. You know, assumptions about Social Security, assumptions about medical costs, and that's my point, is that there are so many assumptions involved in this. It is not some magic number that you can just say, oh, well, if I have eight times my salary at retirement, I'm going to be okay. The, the, the point of, of w what I want to talk about is that it's just not so simple. You have other, you have other factors. Um, you know, the more that you make, you know, if you're making $500,000 going into retirement, you know, eight times that is probably may not be enough. The more you make, the more you need to have saved. Um, also, the factoring in of Social Security. You know, if you're 35, what's Social Security going to look like when you're getting ready to retire? You know, are you married? Are you single? Uh, you know, family health history, um, lifestyle. You know, do you like to travel? Do you like to stay home? Uh, retiring early increases the risk even if you have eight times the amount but you're trying to retire at age 50 that's that's a lot more risky than eight times when you're retiring at 75 and so there's a, a number of variables that just using the number eight doesn't capture and so I would caution people when you're doing your retirement planning to be very skeptical of, of these purported simple rules of thumb well that's all the time we have for the first segment when we come back We'll continue talking a little about retirement rules of thumb. So for all things money, I'm your host, David Blaine.